Okay, thank you very much uh, and welcome everybody. And uh, I am very happy to uh, take part in this conference. But uh, as I told to Igor, who is the host of uh, this session, that uh, I am somewhat uh, disappointed and frustrated because uh, I cannot be there uh, in person. So that is the situation which uh, was experienced by the student teachers as well, you see, while uh, preparing and waiting uh, for their practicum. Uh, 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 as a very special part of their uh, teacher preparation uh, uh, process. And maybe this is um, similar to their disappointment and their frustration, what they experienced. When uh, lockdown came into Hungary, uh, we uh, teacher educators became very interested immediately in the situation with the student teachers who were waiting or who were already uh, in their teaching practicum at that time. So we concentrated on their experiences and their uh, opinions about the situation. So the title of the presentation, which I introduced today is Practi Practicum Online, Initial Teacher Education Students Experience on Teaching Practicum uh, during the COVID-19 lockdown of schools in 20, uh, 2020, March and June. Uh, and my colleagues with whom we uh, prepared the presentation uh, are uh, uh, Judith Ratz, uh, Aniko Fehérvári, Edina Kish, uh, who is with us in this session now, and I myself, we all work for Ötvös Lorand University Budapest, Hungary, and we all work uh, on different uh, faculties of the university, but uh, for uh, teacher education, uh, we all work and we are familiar with these issues for many years. Uh, but the situation which we had to face with the student teachers was something absolutely unusual and unexpected situation. So in my presentation at first, I will talk about uh, shortly uh, a theoretical background of the situation. Then I introduce the research design. Uh, then I introduce very shortly the practicum in Hungarian teacher education. And then as a, uh, the parts of our research, I will introduce some information about the questionnaire data we collect Collected, a metaphor uh, data collection and semi-structured interviews uh, results. And finally, I will talk about the conclusions of our research. So very, very shortly, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, that uh, practice uh, is an important issue in teacher education because uh, uh, we have uh, teacher education and teacher education is uh, 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 on university. Because uh, in the past, in the history, it was not an issue. I mean, teaching or uh, 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 just uh, uh, to behave as a teacher in everyday life because uh, that was the very normal and everybody could uh, uh, teach uh, without any kind of uh, preparation. Later on, when teaching became an institutionalized activity, it became already a question, but the main idea was that everybody can teach. That's not a problem because that's a bi biological uh, predisposition of human beings that we can teach. So the issue was who is familiar with the content of the teaching, with the field of the knowledge which was, uh, which was taught uh, by the people. Later on, uh, approximately, approximately in, in the uh, 18, rather 19, early 19th century, uh, it became an issue because uh, uh, because uh, teaching, uh, uh, teacher preparation was in the uh, institutional, institutionalized at first in France, actually by uh, partly by Napoleon. Uh, who founded uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure. He didn't found literally Ecole Normale Supérieure, but he changed the profile of this institution to teacher preparation. And from that point, this issue emerged. I mean, the uh, issue of the theory and the issue of the practice of teaching as a profession. And when uh, teacher education became uh, uh, almost globally universal, uni, uh, uh, went to universities. So it was uh, uh, the process of universitization of teacher education. Uh, this ambivalency of practice and theory became still even uh, more important and more uh, 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 
strong uh, issue or how to tell you. So what is more important? Theory or practice. However, there are many, many people who are very much for uh, practicum in teacher education. And there is a tendency, uh, which is called practicum turn, uh, which is about the fact that uh, in many teacher education, there are advocates of the more and more and more um, uh, and better prepared, high quality teacher education with more and better prepared uh, uh, practicum. So practicum turns me, turn means uh, that uh, there is a tendency uh, that uh, that compared to the theory, the practicum uh, has uh, a prominent critical role, uh, maybe a leading role in teacher education because teaching is something practical. So in this landscape, uh, the situation with COVID-19 was a dramatic change uh, because practicum just was deleted from one minute to the other and uh, 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 student teachers and also teacher educators, they had to face with the situation that this so important practicum uh, became something uh, uh, impossible to do. So this was uh, a non-planned situation and a non-planned situation for research, doing research. So we tried to react to this situation as researchers as quickly uh, as it was possible. And we tried to carry out the research uh, uh, in real time with the situation, but naturally it was uh, uh, impossible uh, because we had to uh, design the research, we had to uh, get the research ethical permissions, uh, we had to get the permission from university teacher education center and so on. So finally it took time and therefore finally we couldn't collect data from the uh, student teachers in real time uh, but just uh, after uh, the first lockdown uh, uh, situation. So in our university, Otvesloran University Budapest, we collected uh, 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 data by questionnaires uh, from 117 uh, student teachers who finished their uh, practicum in 2000 June, 2020 June. Uh, and uh, also as a part of this data collection, uh, we asked them about uh, metaphors on uh, teaching in uh, 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 offline and online uh, context. And we got uh, 86 uh, respond, uh, resp uh, we had uh, 86 respondents to this question of the questionnaire. Uh, after that, in 2020, we collected data from 10 um, uh, student teachers who carried out their practicum during this lockdown time. Uh, they came from humanities and science subjects. And in 2021 January, we collected again uh, data from some 40 uh, 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 student teachers, but only metaphor data collection we repeated at that time. That was the next academic year uh, already, but a lockdown situation again. So in Hungary, we have uh, two types of uh, practicums, uh, a short uh, type of practicum, uh, which is about uh, one one semester of each subject because Hungarian teacher, student teachers, they are prepared for two uh, subjects. And uh, we have a long practicum, which takes uh, uh, one academic year. This is the six years of uh, education, but we collect the data in this short, after this short practicum of the students. So these pa participants of our research, they came um, from this population. And now let's uh, introduce you quickly and shortly some of our results. Uh, 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 we asked the uh, 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 student teachers about their experiences uh, um, in uh, distant teaching time, so how they felt uh, this experience and how it went. And it came out uh, that uh, one third of the participants, they run uh, most of their lessons in real time. So they were the lucky few, but two thirds of the participants, uh, they had um, on, uh, only or partly online uh, teaching uh, during the practicum. Uh, and uh, as you see, quite a big number of them 
uh, one third of the whole uh, participants, uh, they left, uh, they, they kept only uh, uh, very few lessons, uh, uh, but uh, they, could, uh, they couldn't do the real practicum, um, what is about uh, teaching and uh, preparing and consultation uh, and so on and so on. So the situation became very, very different and very uh, challenging for the student teachers compared to offline teaching. Uh, we asked them if the distance learning, uh, sorry, teaching requires little, little teaching skills from the student teachers, but, but um, uh, two thirds of them, uh, they disagreed uh, with this and they told that distance lear uh, learning teaching requires considerable teaching skills from student teachers uh, uh, as well. Uh, we, can, we asked them, uh, if they can teach as well in distance learning as in school. Uh, but uh, uh, as you see, the majority of the participants, they uh, saw that, uh, that, uh, that uh, it is not as good as in uh, real uh, uh, live teaching, as in uh, contact teaching. And uh, they told that distance teaching and learning is definitely a learning, uh, learning loss, both for the student teachers and the students in the school as well. As well. We asked them uh, if they had uh, uh, get enough feedback from the pupils during the distance learning, uh, but uh, uh, as you see, uh, it was very much uh, hurted because basically uh, most of the student teachers, they felt that no feedback or no communication face to face. So that was a kind of uh, black teaching. I mean, black uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the way that they haven't seen each other. They didn't uh, uh, have the real contact, the normal contact. And they felt that this was uh, uh, frustrating and disappointing. And uh, 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 we asked them if they feel that they can teach as well in distance learning as in schools. Uh, and uh, uh, and um, most of them, uh, they rather disagreed or didn't agree with this uh, uh, statement. Uh, so this means again that distance teaching and learning is uh, definitely a loss. Uh, but I, sorry, I repeated one of my slides. So I, we asked them about the perceptions of teaching profession and they told that still they are happy with uh, uh, the school and with their head teacher, the mentor teacher, how to tell you. Uh, but uh, but uh, there was uh, a number of students, 14% 14, 14 of the students who felt that they didn't get enough uh, uh, help from the uh, mentor teacher, from the head teacher, and also they had difficulties with uh, the technology and they were very, very much and clearly disappointed. So the two together, not enough help from the mentor teacher and uh, not having good abilities in um, technology uh, made them very, very disappointed. So. Uh, we asked uh, them to write uh, some metaphors about the situation, uh, metaphors about uh, 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 offline teaching and online teaching, because it shows uh, the conceptual um, situation with the student teachers. And you see, this is uh, a table about the metaphors of student teachers on contact uh, teaching. And they saw that the teacher in this situation, when they are in contact, physical contact with the students, he is a, or she is a leader, an expert, a family member. Uh, anyway, uh, mostly positive um, metaphors they had. You see some slight uh, negative uh, metaphors also they mentioned uh, that uh, that this is like a circus uh, uh, because the teacher is an actor and so on and so on. But very uh, beautiful metaphors. Teacher is a son, heart in human person, and so on and so on. This is another chart about the second data collection uh, on metaphors. So one year later, and other pool of the student teachers. But you can uh, uh, notice the, the difference, uh, how much uh, uh, the roles and the uh, uh, identity of the student teachers were, was destroyed uh, by the situation. Blind scientist, uh, uh, YouTube, YouTube star, a fish on the beach, uh, a scarecrow, uh, uh, cat watching the aquarium, uh, difficult to inform personal relationship with the students, hardly any reaction, uh, many preparatory work without uh, a, a real feedback, uh, and so on and so on. So you see, 
many, many negative aspects of uh, being a student teacher. So what was the, what were the results with or semi-structured interviews? Uh, uh, it was a big shock for the student teachers according their interview data, uh, interview data uh, because the situation was chaotic. Nobody knew what to do, where to go uh, and so on. What was some relief that we had one week spring college break at that time. So uh, both the mentor teachers and the student teachers, they could somewhat prepare uh, for the uh, situation. But uh, on, on the other hand, nobody really knew what was going on. Uh, so 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 uh, uh, so they were teaching online some of them synchronous some of them uh, asynchronous teaching uh, followed you need, you know that uh, uh, synchronous teaching they were in the same space same same time asynchronous that the teachers they prepared some materials and the students uh, in the school they were working on that uh, they prepared many many learning uh, resources for this uh, for the students in the school uh, and they supported the mentor teachers, you see, because most of the mentor teachers, they lagged behind in te technology compared to the student teachers. And the student teachers, they prepared assessment type uh, tasks, uh, tests and essays, uh, um, and not uh, uh, live experience, uh, experiments, uh, um, no other way. Because for example, in chemistry and physics, the student teachers became very, very frustrated because for many years, they were waiting for this moment that they will do the uh, experiments in the classroom with the students and the students will learn a lot and they will like this. But it just disappeared because of the situation. They had some positive experiences, uh, uh, but mostly they experienced little activity from the, uh, the students' part and the lack of planning of pedagogical process uh, because nobody knew what to do. Uh, the positive sides were uh, development of digital competencies they felt, more creative tasks they could prepare for the students, uh, uh, but still you see they felt uh, insufficient in the transfer of knowledge. Uh, uh, what is interesting that still they didn't become disappointed, uh, even stronger in their devotion for the profession, and they dev uh, remain devoted for a job as a teacher, but they told that never ever they want to be a teacher in an online situation. They don't want to be online teachers. So you see, we had different picture uh, coming from the different data collection sets, from the questionnaire, from the um, uh, metaphors, and from the interviews, uh, but uh, naturally this is why we did uh, this triangle uh, data collection. But what is uh, very clear that the students became very frustrated uh, and uh, they were searching positive experiences for themselves and uh, they tried still their uh, best, but, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, with many, many difficulties and they still uh, had the leading opinion that teaching is a personal human uh, uh, activity. Teacher and students, they had to be together in the same space because that's the real teaching and that's the real task of a teacher to be together in the real space uh, with the students. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. And thank I you very come much. out of uh, 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 screen share. Yeah, thank you very much <clears throat> for uh, this presentation. And uh, so you agreed. Uh, do you have any questions to clarify at the moment? Because we agreed that we will help discussion at the end. At the end. But um, yeah, any questions to clarify? Maybe just one. That's yeah, please. So, all right. Um, what I understood from your presentation, um, you um, discussed with the students um, how they looked at their own learning process, how they looked at their interaction with uh, pupils, 
Um, did you also question them about their interaction with their uh, teacher educators at university? Because uh, they um, uh, regularly in a teacher education program, they have to fill, fulfill certain assignments and uh, to meet certain criteria, which is difficult when you have no uh, uh, physical meetings in schools. Uh, so was that part of their concern also? So we didn't ask them about the university supervisor uh, teachers because we ourselves, we all are uh, uh, university supervisors and we felt that uh, that would be something contradictory a situation to ask them about ourselves in this sense. Um, what we asked about, uh, and I didn't introduce in this presentation, we asked them about the mentor teachers in the school, as I men mentioned this, but we also asked them about the community of the teachers in the schools, you see, and uh, the student teachers, uh, most of them, they felt that their relationship with the mentor teacher in the school uh, became, became uh, um, uh, hurted, but they were totally cut from the community, you see. So they didn't uh, uh, meet the, uh, find a way uh, to the community of the teachers of chemistry or literature teaching. So they became uh, 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 very isolated uh, in this sense. And many times uh, the mentor teacher just lagged behind the in the technology. So they supported the mentor teachers, as I told you, uh, why they didn't have the experience with the other teachers in the school. They didn't feel that they belonged to a bigger community in the school. So we didn't ask them about the student, about the uh, uh, teacher educators, but we asked them about the uh, mentor teachers and the colleagues of the mentor teachers in the school. Thank you very much and uh, applause. <laughs> um, Thank you. And um, let's move to the second presentation and uh, colleagues from Spain uh, will continue because uh, our session is so nicely designed because we are focusing on the same topic and uh, I really hope that we will uh, have very fruitful discussion at the end, what we all can somehow take away and use in our institutions. So please colleagues from, uh, I, 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 uh, I can't even pronounce the name of a university. I avoid to do this. <laughs> Just introduce, introduce yourself. And uh, Thank you. minutes or something, like, right? Thank you. Uh, can you see my screen, my presentation? Okay. Yes, very nicely. Thank, thank you, Eve. Well, my name is Lucia Sánchez Tarazaga. We came from a uh, Uji or Univer uh, Jaume I University uh, in Spain. And the presentation we, we would like to share with you is Practicum in time of COVID-19. What have student teachers learned in Spain? Very similar to our colleague. And it is a study with, which was conducted with my colleagues Aida, which is already here also, Paola and Marta, who is a student. We are three teachers and one student. We like the voice from the students in our research. Well, these are the four key points of our presentation. And we'd like to just to set in the map where we are. Uh, We're in Spain next to the Mediterranean Sea in a city which is next to Valencia, which is called Castellón. Um, and this is uh, the library of our university. Uh, we'd like to introduce the practicum of uh, childhood and primary education teacher degree. We have practicum in third year and fourth year, but uh, from last year, we studied with practicum in second year. Anyway, for this study, we collect information for students which are th in third and fourth year, the last years of our studies. Practicum in our university means 272 schools, uh, approximately 600 student teachers that we call students here in our presentation, and 65 uh, university tutors that we call supervisors. These are the data from uh, last year. 
Well, just a short um, introduction, like the similar to our colleague that the out, what we already know. But uh, the, um, the outbreak of coronavirus disease and the associated home confinement measures in March 2020 forced the shutdown of our schools and universities and the full the suspension of the face-to-face -face placement at, uh, at schools. Our students were remain, all the population remain confined to their homes. So as a result, a new scenario had to be designed. We had to uh, make an adaptation to the new situation. Uh, in our context in uh, an university, um, we had two options. First option was a telematic collaboration with the schools, which means that students um, support the teacher together with the supervisor. And also we designed an option, second option, and it was a non-telematic collaboration because um, they had uh, no, it was not really possible to collaborate with schools. Some schools had some really troubles to, to, yes, to include our students, but it was just some, real some students. So uh, mainly we will focus on students with uh, they are in option A, that means they, they make a telematic collaboration with the schools, both from uh, synchronous and synchronous uh, collaboration, but mainly uh, designing materials, online materials. Well, when we start the, the, to set the problem that is, well, practically most we know is a central element in training future teachers, uh, well, it's of great value to develop uh, their professional competencies and it is considered also a crucial state in um, teacher training with theory and practice uh, brought together. And finally, uh, it's a fundamental block in shaping their identity as teachers. But as Keith and Murray say, what happens when it is no longer possible for students to have a practical experience at all? And what if that crisis occurs at a critical point in system where there is a big emphasis on a clinical practice or extensive immersion in the field. I think we'll, while much is discussed of the challenges that educators and their institutions have been facing during this crisis, there is little reported about how students have been coping with challenges. Some of our real students' concerns, these are sentences or statements that our, what, what we found in our students' reports, is on the one hand, they, I haven't learned anything compared to what I learned at school face to face, or I have missed many more important things for my education that will never come back. On the other way, that is like the glass is half full or half empty, that we say that we call a ray of hope. It's because we also read, it is a new and different experience. Or another student points, honestly, I think COVID-19 has taught me new things about teaching online. So we said we have to carry out a, st a study. So the aim of this research is to make visible the learning acquired in the practicum from our students. Some uh, brief notes about the methods. It's a qualitative research based on content analysis. We have gathered 40 uh, students reports from third and four year students uh, through an online form. And we have followed a deductive inductive analysis strategy following the Delors framework. Uh, regarding the roles, as I said at the beginning, we are three university teachers and one student. I think this is one focus. We will like not only carry out uh, by, by teachers, we we'll like to, to involve the students. So we had one student that well, help us and, and we learn it together from the other. And just ethical consideration, we use a consent, an informed consent, etc. What about the results? Well, um, uh, this uh, for the for the analysis we based in the in this in this book from UNESCO in 1996, and it's called the well the, one of the missions of uh, the education. And the report is based on four key pillars. It's called learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, or learning to live together. So we have some uh, frequency analysis that we call these are the student reports, their statements. We have, uh, well, it's learning to know 13, learning to do 
35, more practical because they collaborate with online materials. Learning to be emotional competencies, 20%, and learning to live together, more social, 27. But more apart from numbers, we like to focus on some statements, their voices. So just quick, some examples regarding to learning to do. This is, we, this came this inductive phase, and we, we found three subcategories. Uh, the theoretic, theoretical or academic learning at the university, digital competency, and uh, flexibility in the curriculum. For example, digital, digital competency, they say, one of the things I can say that I have learned is about online applications that before I thought I would never use. I, I would like to, I, I, I don't want to read all the statement, but just some examples. For example, learning to do, we found four categories that are called time management, attention to diversity, development of materials, and learning assessment. Uh, for example, let's an example of attention to diversity. They say students with educational needs, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to respond online. Regarding to learning to be, we found three subcategories. Uh, related to emotional support to children, receive emotional support from tutors, and the skill beliefs and training needs. Let's highlight the last one. So they say, mm, I like this one because they say, we must not take anything for granted. We must always learn from each of the situations we live in and in which we are involved. And I believe that I strive to follow this path and to improve day by day in order to prepare myself as a teacher and be competent. Finally, learning to live together, we found four subcategories, interaction and virtual contact with children, communication with families, teacher coordination and learning from their tutor. Uh, she guided me by telling me to think about craft experiments and simple activities. This made me for me and helped me to, well, etc. This, uh, with all these statements, we build up this um, mind map and all these categories were connected. But let's focus just to, we have four ideas to the final remarks. So first of all, um, well, there's also evidence of students acquisition of knowledge and some competencies. Similar results were found in another Spanish universities in Barcelona or in Madrid. So we can say that online spaces, even complex, uh, can still afford meaningful opportunities for learning. Second idea is that some of the students' concerns are in line with those of experienced or in-service teachers and teacher educators, such as social competencies, social justice, digital cap, children context and communication with families, among others. The third idea is that students have acquired valuable skills for the practice, for example, the flexibility as future teachers, as they can bring new perspectives from their experience. So maybe it's not a lost opportunity, it's uh, or in terms of learning, if not, it's a different learning of different situations. However, nothing can replace the richness of face-to-face -face practicum. Uh, we're in favor of uh, practicum in the field. And we have this uh, reflection, that is students' reports reveal that they had significant difficulties in managing the situation. And the results also highlight the need to include more specifically training in teacher programs, such as curricular competencies, such as the development of students' autonomy and reflective um, practice. But, uh, and this leads us to the, the final idea that this is, maybe the role may have been affected more technicians than reflective practitioners. So they regret the lack of classroom practice, training on the job, uh, immersion in the field, the articulation between theory and practice is a process that requires time and experience. Immediate responses may lead to an accumulative professional growth rather than a transformational development of teachers to be, may reinforce more instrumental competencies rather than a reflective profile. So, uh, well, 
these are some of the reflections. We're uh, this year, they, we have extended the practicum for those students that were on the third year that are together in the fourth year. And we started a dual practicum. I would like to share with you this dual practicum with, with our, we are a, a pioneer university in Spain with this program that is called one day at university, four day at school. So it is a way to connect theory and practice. Uh, on Monday, we met with our students, uh, teacher educators or supervisors, uh, lecturers at, school, uh, at university. And we discuss about what they have to observe, uh, what they, they should do during the week at school. And um, from Tuesday to Friday, they are with their, uh, with their teachers at school. And they, we, we are arranging some time of, of reflective practice and reflective notebook. So maybe we are uh, going, we're moving through this need to to focus on this uh, reflective practicum to connect theory and 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 practice and so these are our main yes reflections the results we will this is not a published uh, study we would like to share with you first and of course we'd like to well to invite if someone of these participants would like to, to join our research in this dual practicum or regarding to practicum, here we are from Spain, very available to, to share with you uh, these reflections regarding to, to practicum. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, applause again. <laughs> Congratulations. This is really nice piece of research and you already learned from that and developed a survey or a student teachers practice. Yeah, but please, uh, uh, short questions for clarification. Okay. Yeah, please keep all your good ideas for discussion. And um, uh, let's... Uh, Sorry, I, I have one quick question. Yeah, please. Uh, I put it in, in the chat. Um, I know how difficult it is to get things changed in the, by the Spanish ministry. How did you get these, this, what's basically a fundamental change in practice? How did you get it approved so quickly in the um, memoria? Um, uh, well, um, I think that uh, here uh, we have the we're organizing regional communities and the Valencian community uh, was one of the fastest communities in make all the arrangements. So it was more the task of the role of our autonomy that in even in press or in some reports, they have been um, I mean, recognize because of their, their well done role and the, the fast answer to all this, this situation. So maybe uh, we, we, maybe um, I think it, it was one of the answers. And regarding the data collection, we, we, we sent uh, yes, an online form and, and the students were very happy to, well, to answer and, to collaborate. Also, the fact to have a student in our research group, it also make, I mean, um, yes, uh, faster the situation and more, you know, much more transparency because sometimes the students, when they receive, when they receive an, a questionnaire, they say, oh, again, the teachers, they are asking us a new thing. But we had Marta, our student, and it was like, no, it's a very important, interesting question. Please join us. And I think it was just also uh, at this, yes, it was really, I think it was a uh, team, uh, team role collaboration. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your question. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry, Melinda, but I didn't... Uh... 
uh, uh, see this question in a chat. I was typing slow. It was my fault. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, it's uh, really uh, good if we can also raise questions in, in chat and pick up those. Any other questions at the moment? No. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Lucia, once again. You're welcome. And uh, let's move to Albania. And uh, Lydia, uh, floor is yours, or screen is yours. Maybe she's uh, muted again because we don't hear. Yes, 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 yes. I just understand that is. But we, we saw your screen, so uh, yes. presentation was fine. Just uh, unmute. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, now it's wonderful. Right now, uh, I'm very connected with um, before uh, uh, me presentation uh, with this uh, theory of Sean. Uh, anyway, I will um, present my ideas uh, in a practicum just right now. The topic is uh, practicum during the lockdown uh, pandemic 2020 for service teacher perception of their, uh, their professional competences. I'm uh, coming from University of Alexander Moisio Duras from Albania uh, and um, our practice uh, like everywhere, uh, was a little bit, uh, how to say, a strange in one meaning. Um, okay, I will start because I, I'm in the pressure of time right now um, with the content of my presentation that is like that. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, going uh, d directly in the introduction. Uh, the efficiency of pedagogical practicum um, in uh, the professional in the professional development of pre service teacher has been remained one of the most debated issue uh, for for a long time uh, in two uh, past decades. Uh, inclusive education also is a relatively new education policy which has countless changes and challenges. Uh, one of them being the implement, uh, uh, implementation of a profile of inclusive education teacher during the pedagogical practicum in their initial education. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, to uh, present uh, in which way we do the practice in uh, our university. There are five universities, in fact, in Albania offering uh, a bachelor program in primary education teacher. In all university, take place two professional practice with uh, six uh, credits each that is similar uh, to uh, this uh, um, the model that I saw in uh, Hungarian but it's a little bit different from uh, Spain uh, practice. Uh, the first internship take place in the second semester of the second year in, uh, and it is passive. That means students only observe uh, and has a precondition that students has passed the courses of uh, teaching methodology. In the second internship, that will take place in the second semester of the third year uh, and has the precondition, the first internship and pre-service teacher. It is an active participant and has the right to teach while supervised uh, by a mentor teacher. In the third year, uh, in the first semester, student attend as a compulsory module, inclusive education, to be well prepared for this practice. Uh, the, practicum, uh, the practicum take place over uh, 50 weeks, where the pre-service teacher must be present five hours per week in the class. In a normal condition, the evaluation for this practice is done through two measurement instruments, the tool of the mentor teacher 
and the faculty advisor, which are based on field observation of the lectures uh, and the work with dossier. The dossier contain uh, 45 daily preparation and reflective ECEA. Uh, during the lockdown situation, faculty of education um, at, the fa uh, at our faculty of education in Alexander Moisiu University held a meeting with fac all faculty advisor and uh, we decided to carry out online practice of pre-service teacher by changing evaluation variables uh, for this practice. Uh, conducting online pedagogical practice as a result of isolation due to COVID-19 pandemic was completely unpredictable, uh, uh, unpredictable practice, however, forced by the condition. So uh, it was like that. We have no chance to, to um, change the situation. Uh, we were thinking to base uh, this practice in reflective practice. According to John Dew, active, persistent, and careful consideration of any beliefs or uh, supposed from knowledge in the light of the grounds that support it, and further conclusion to which it leads, it includes a conscious and voluntary effort to establish beliefs open a firm basis of evidence rationally uh, and if we um are if we are focused on or if we are based in the shown ideas about reflective practice i would like to point out uh his idea of import uh, as uh, as he consider reflective practice as important tool for beginning teacher to improve their practice and According to Moon, reflective practice is an active, dynamic, action-based and ethical set of skills placed in real life and dealing with real, complex and difficult situation. Uh, based on uh, those, um, I would like to uh, point out a little bit uh, some uh, theoretical framework of the study. Uh, um, first of all, uh, this study is based on Sean's theory, uh, pres uh, presented the concept of uh, reflection in action and reflection on action. Um, I would like to uh, point out the difference between them. Uh, first of all, a reflection in action happened at the same time that event happened. Uh, at it, and it's connected with experiencing, thinking on your feet, thinking about what to do next, acting straight away. And reflection on action uh, happened after everything has happened, uh, thinking about something that has happened, thinking what you would do differently next time, uh, talking uh, your time. Um, we bear in mind that uh, it is so difficult to um, to do everything like uh, it is in a normal condition. That means online things are really, really uh, frustrating for everyone. Uh, but um, we have a focus to be uh, in our focus. It is very important to be uh, inclusive teacher. And um, in this situation, it's, it is more challenging. And for this uh, issue, we would like uh, for our uh, students to be more careful about uh, profiling uh, inclusive teachers. Uh, this profile is based in on uh, four core values. Uh, evaluating learners' diverse, uh, diversity, supporting all learners, working with others, and continuing professional uh, development. Um, the purpose of this study uh, is uh, to shed light uh, on uh, efficiency of implementation of pre-service teacher online practicum, considering in particular 
uh, the implementation of their profile in inclusive teacher in practice and to understand the challenges that occur in the professional development of pre-service teacher as a result of reflexive practice. Uh, in uh, this qualitative uh, action research, um, I would like to point out why uh, we, uh, I use uh, um, action research. First of all, action research is designed to bridge the gap between research and practice. According to Craig, um, the ultimate goal of action research is to address a practical problem and to improve professional practice. Uh, one of the problem identifying practicum of the year ago was originally pre a service teacher to demonstrate in practice the profile of inclusive teacher. Uh, participants in this uh, study was uh, uh, where uh, senior students in primary education uh, program, bachelor uh, program. Uh, the sample was selected by convenience technique. Um, I was their mentor. Um, mentor teacher, um, uh, that means we, we, um, we hire um, mentor teacher uh, based uh, on contract with our university every year. And uh, for 34 students, we, uh, we have a contract with nine mentor teacher. Three criteria was considered we are choosing mentor teacher uh, to have at least uh, uh, 10 years uh, teaching experience and two years mentoring experience, have at least one child with special needs in their classroom uh, because we would like to see uh, how the teacher interact with uh, um, those uh, students and uh, to to create the possibility for uh, our practitioner to do the same, uh, be in the same city as a pre-service teacher. Uh, because uh, this year, uh, everything, it was so um, different and we would like uh, not to be, how to say, blocked by the, the distancing. Uh, because sometimes it's, uh, um, easy uh, to communicate with someone, maybe uh, uh, even in physical way when you are located in the same area. Uh, and it was only uh, one uh, faculty advisor. Here uh, in, uh, in this table, you will see some, um, uh, some data of uh, the, the participants. Uh, we were based in some ethical issues, uh, in um, research, participants were informed about nature and purpose of the study, and uh, I requested to take part in this uh, study voluntary, and was, uh, they were granted uh, uh, the autonomy, the, the uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, um, their, uh, their data will be not spread everywhere. Uh, okay, um, in data collection, uh, this action research project was implemented through four phases, uh, starting from zero to three. Uh, the data were collected during the time frame of March and June. They were collected from two focus group with mentor, teacher and students, observation of daily plan prepared uh, by service teacher, analyzing and evaluating, uh, evaluating um, based on control list of daily planning and videos created and presented by pre-service teacher, analyzing and evaluation, uh, evaluation, uh, evaluation of pre-service teacher in of reflective ISEA. Uh, data processing, uh, we um, I, uh, identify themes, coding them, uh, content analysis of observation of daily uh, planning and videos and voice message prepared by pre-service teacher, content analysis of pre-service teacher on reflective essays. Um, in the phase uh, zero, uh, it will happen, uh, it, uh, this happened uh, in, um, on uh, 
uh, 11, 10, uh, 11 till uh, 18 uh, March. Um, in this uh, moment, uh, we uh, in our faculty recruit uh, nine mentoring uh, teachers. Um, and we uh, in uh, our faculty sp spread uh, the, the students in groups uh, and one um, uh, one of uh, mentor has uh, sometimes four students or uh, in two uh, two cases three students um, most important thing in this uh, phase was to create a contact between mentor teacher and per service teacher and the site expectation getting know that um, everything in a classroom uh, and most important thing uh, was to understand uh, every single uh, characteristic of uh, each uh, student and uh, in this moment it was a uh, important to only to plan um, in the second phase that is phase one uh, the action was uh, daily planning of per service teacher and creating videos and voice message to explain concept uh, uh, and teach a, uh, accomplished teaching and control of pupils in cooperation with mentor teacher and the action focus was to act and observe um the third phase phase two um the action uh was group presentation that means zoom classroom of materials prepared during the phase one analyzing them based on the checklist of profile of included uh, inclusive teacher um i observe uh, nine presentation randomly select from each group uh and uh, retaining based on reflective that means we discuss everything that we will uh that we see in those um uh preparation and uh all the the, the work that students has done, have done and uh creating the practicum dossier um there are some uh there are focus group with per service teacher here focus group of mentor teacher um and uh, in uh, action focus was to observe, to reflect, and to plan. Uh, during the uh, nine uh, presentation, uh, it came out uh, some uh, some uh, findings. Uh, first one was uncertainty in concept of inclusive education as a presence access to to education uh, participants uh, and achievements of all learners um, it was obvious lack of essential information about learning diversity um, arising from support needs cultural language social economic backgrounds etc uh, lack of application of teaching methods that create possibility of inclusion uh the, because it was very difficult to participate uh to to make everything uh, everybody to participate in the classroom assessing um the teacher communication with parents as a parental uh and bilateral responsibility uh lack of identification of the students specific before uh, grading uh frequent use of uh summative assessment in relation to formative assessment uh, all these findings were discussed with press service teacher in the form of uh, feedback on uh, group work and turned into reference point for the future work improvement um, from the interview uh, i um, would like to uh, share with you uh, in uh this focus group uh 12 students from 34 were randomly selected focus group question were uh, related to teaching competence and teaching confidence include uh, as an inclusive teacher uh and the the question uh um of this semi structure was 
was uh, were those. Uh, how does your mentor help you to identify learning diversity in the classroom during the practicum? How did you mentor help you to discover your teaching problems? Uh, how have you been able to improve your abil ability to work with students, parents? How did your mentor help you to develop practical skills as an inclusive teacher? In which area did you feel most competent? Where do you feel uh, um, you need to improve in the future? What difficulty did you face during the internship development in the extra, uh, extra extraordinary conditions um, and those um, um, question were also uh, based uh, for reflective essay for the other part of uh, students um, it was found that uh, that seemed to have helped uh, them uh to identify learning uh, diversity it's helping given by mentor to discover the combination of the students personal uh features with a result of achievement during the formative assessment uh to fi find out the teaching problems mentor used three uh main methods a request for analyze uh, analyzes immediately after teaching online used question um uh, there are two uh, main questions in this uh, moment uh, what went right and what uh, could be better um, and uh, the second uh, possibility was asking for service teacher to discover the connection between pupils achievement and teaching activities uh, the third one uh, suggesting analyzing and compatibility between learning outcomes and students achievement um, uh, our students uh, that means per service teacher have felt that they have a significant improvement two-way communication with pupils and their parents as well they have uh, explored most efficient way to communicate according to the possibility of the pupils and their family. Um, imitation of individual, uh, individual plans used by mentor teacher have increased uh, the pre-service teachers believe that inclusive, uh, inclusion is visible in practice and it's not simple a theory because uh, in the moment that we explain some lecture in uh, our uh, teaching hours in university, they think there are some, uh, the, we are romanticizing this uh, issue. And uh, here we have some, uh, 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 um, how to say, um, uh, uh, expression of a student's a pre service teacher. Uh, she said, uh, when we study in inclusive education model, it seems uh, to me that is a claim that all children could learn in classroom despite the challenges, especially for children with learning disability. Uh, seems like a fairy tale. Now I see that if you are trying and collaborating with group, you can see uh, changes in the child. However, uh, they feel need to work as a team on this plan, not just <coughs> imitate them sorry uh, among the difficulty faced during the practicum development um, in uh, extraordinary uh, extraordinary uh, condition pre-service teacher list um, lack of their electronic equipment uh, uh, and pupils for conducting online uh, learning a large load of uh, for daily preparation confusion caused by sending students assignment from different platforms and application, lack of um, internet, both uh, themselves and uh, pupils. Um, in a mentor focus group interview, uh, there are some findings too. The question were related to teacher competencies in the teaching practice as an inclusive teacher was, um, uh, where, uh, how do you think you help pre-service teacher to uh, 
uh, value learning diversity and identifying learning um, differences between peoples in which way we are um, able to develop uh, the confidence of per service teacher as an inclusive teacher uh, in what aspect of inclusive teaching you think your interns have improved during the first two phases of the project what do you think you have been the biggest benefit uh, for your mentoring pre-service uh, teacher in this difficult period. And those hey are- dear, please try to finish with one minute. Okay. Um, um, uh, most um, the observation in two weeks help a pre-service teacher a lot of value in learning uh, diversity and identify learning uh, differences between uh, uh, students preparation materials was another uh, issue uh, voice message and uh, video creation and everything uh, develop the confidence of per service teachers inclusive teacher uh, teacher list two main aspects of previous uh, or per service teacher training recognizing and identifying uh, needs of the students and communication uh, communicating with parents the facilitator and creation uh, of this uh, instrumental video um, uh, had been highlighted, uh, appreciated by mentor teacher uh, because uh, they helped them a lot uh, um, in analyzing and reflection of their work. Um, there are a lot of um, things here, but I would like uh, to point out uh, that after everything is done, uh, we notified that uh, it has uh, this practice has a very good impact on uh, students, uh, an increase of learning from an experience, uh, understanding, uh, improving understanding uh, of own beliefs, attitudes, and value, teaching techniques, aspect of assessment were improved, a deep understanding of learning, uh, teaching and learning, communication technique, per, uh, personal and professional strength area of identification. Uh, the desire for knowledge and skills, uh, new knowledge and skills, personal professional improvement uh, of uh, inclusive education were identified and the creation of ideas how to solve uh, a real situation. Um, and includes uh, conclusion that uh, action, reflection and revision of process during four phases in the practice uh, uh, provide an uh, under, a deep understanding um, and connection between theory and practice and professional goal for, uh, for everyone. That means um, uh, it, it, it was, it was pro, uh, very good for a pre-service teacher and uh, for teacher also. As a result, it became possible to create new form of pedagogical practicum uh, that uh, benefit all participants in the study. Um, so there are some uh, importance of the and the meditation, but it's uh, okay. I'm stopped sharing uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. And uh, I really admire how fast actually our teacher educators act to research what is actually going on uh, and how to use this knowledge to, to develop and uh, to create possibilities for uh, student teachers uh, uh, distance learning, because this is uh, what actually uh, we as teacher educators uh, do. We offer distance learning for our student teachers. So thank you very much and applause. <laughs> and, thank you. Uh, any questions uh, for Lydia to clarify this presentation? Yeah, so so uh, would you please explain again what video the student teachers had to to give to you or the mentor teachers? Uh, we we uh, we create this uh, system that um, we uh, connect one uh, for students with one mentor teacher and they are um, we consider like that uh, it is our new reality if they was uh, was a teacher in service we do we uh, they will do all the the, the preparation and stuff uh, in those conditions so um, 
we try to imitate uh, the position of the teacher. And one uh, most important thing is uh, to see uh, this practicum it's, uh, as, um, uh, as a possibility to, um, how to say, uh, to be part of, uh, of reality. You know, uh, if teacher are going to prepare themselves uh, overnight uh, to shift from uh, class teaching to uh, online teaching, it's the same for our students. They are going to, to be part of this reality sooner or later. That means uh, we connected, um, I, I say we connected because uh, there are uh, uh, plenty of group in my uh, faculty of education that we are doing the same. We took um, uh, a decision uh, in our faculty to um, proceed in like uh, in, in in that way. That means to connect um, one mentor uh, uh, teacher with four students and they are working all together and it was a great help for a teacher too because our students were uh, faster and better in preparing materials uh, in digital way and they feel supporting each other and they um, feel like there was a small community that working together to um, fulfill one aim and uh, the most important thing is to evaluate themselves as inclusive teacher, not to let some a body behind, uh, because the situation was so difficult. Uh, the most uh, important thing is to be, um, how to say, um, fair enough with uh, with everybody, with uh, every child, and it was um, really difficult because. Uh, there are some problems in uh, equipment. They have no uh, uh, children have their, their uh, they have no uh, their own laptop, for example. They access everything from the mobiles, and it was so difficult, in fact. But uh, to be all together and to reflect in uh, um, every step what they are doing, what they are doing, uh, what is going to be right, what is going to be improved. It was so uh, helpful. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Thank you, Lydia. Yes. Uh, uh, I would like to ask you to, to rise thumb up from this reaction, who are actually teacher educators in uh, this session. Uh, just to understand uh, who, who is who. Yeah, raise the thumb up. Who is DJ educator in that session? Mm, just a moment. Yeah, or just physically. <laughs> okay. Not all of us, but uh, many of us are actually DJ educators. Um, <clears throat> Actually, uh, uh, thank you again, Lydia. And uh, I prepared some key uh, sort of um, messages what we heard during those three presentations. And uh, for uh, uh, next uh, discussion, I don't know, how, uh, is it good or bad? It could limit our discussion, but uh, uh, as time is limited, probably it could help uh, us to, to keep uh, focus. Uh, uh, I, I think that the uh, uh, main message what we got that uh, we need to come out from our comfort zone. We need to find new ways uh, for distance learning uh, 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 or as you also said, Lydia, that uh, this is somehow like a new normality in, in future or anyway, uh, we definitely learned a lot from uh, uh, this period and uh, probably this uh, period offered us uh, 
different uh, perspectives to consider in, in future, for example, how to organize uh, practicum during initial teacher education or what kind of uh, new competencies uh, uh, acquired by student teachers, teacher educators, but also tutor uh, from uh, tutor and mentor perspectives uh, from schools. And also uh, we found very uh, several new ways for interaction between between all parties. And this also gives us new possibilities in future to consider, for example, what were presented by Spanish colleagues. And also, of course, we need to consider new teaching approaches at the university and also at school. So uh, if you think that it could be some, somehow our framework for discussions or your reflection, uh, 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 let's let's use this and uh, and uh, uh, just um, to consider what we can take away from this uh, session. Please, your comments. How do you feel that? Melinda, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you can see me now. Um, yeah, I just put in the in the chat. I've I've worked for about two decades in what's called virtual exchange nowadays, telecollaboration, uh, hybrid learning, and it's the connection of classes uh, at a distance. And I also think that people have worked a lot in online. It's it's these outcomes are not that surprising to us. And we've been talking about it a long time, but I feel like maybe it's time that the two worlds meet. Uh, we're, we've, the pandemic has forced us to recognize that uh, a lot of the uh, teaching competences that we've seen be so necessary for virtual exchange or for online teaching, yeah, it's there. And I don't know if we're ever gonna go back to normal life again. I think that it's going to be this, this sort of blended learning uh, context, it's, it's, it's going to stay with us some of the aspects. So maybe I have that feeling, no, okay, so let's look at what people have been, who have been working in this for a long time, what they have been saying all along, what are the competences necessary? Uh, that, that's my general feeling. A lot of times I hear things, I'm like, yeah, yeah, we know, we, we said this 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. This is coming, right? So I think it's, it's important that we merge the knowledge from what have been very separate environments yeah. until now. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Melinda. And actually during our uh, um, pre-webinar for that conference, we more or less concluded with the same message that uh, there were so many like uh, uh, ideas in a year and we have taught uh, some methodologies which uh, weren't actually put into practice. And uh, now we actually face the situation where we really need to change our practice. Thank you very much. And uh, Marco, your hand is raised, yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, first, I would like to share your compliment to all three presenters in the way they uh, really, really quickly picked up um, uh, their research projects uh, with uh, when the, the, the lockdown uh, started uh, already in, in March. And I think that that really is, is, is very, very good to have that very quick understanding of, of, of in, insight in what's happening in teacher education programs and with student, student teachers. Um, when, when I look at the three presentations, um, I think it's, it's very interesting to see what, what how student teachers felt and, and, and what they experienced. Um, at the same time, for me, the question comes up, but what actually did we learn from this research project? Um, and of course, we, we learned something about how student teachers uh, experience things. But for me, the key question is, but what are the implications for teacher education? Uh, because we have been confronted with a, uh, uh, everybody with, with, with a, a completely re uh, uh, need to re restructure our, our activities, both for teacher educators and te teacher students. Um, but what, what would be the implications for teacher educators, given the outcomes of your research studies, for example, with respect to 
the flexibility they have to 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 offer or the experiences they want to create that 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 are are uh, enriching for students or for the, the kind of support they need to give to students uh, or the way they need to redesign the curriculum given now what we know from this uh, this this uh, this period so i'm very curious to hear from you what you think are the implications for teacher education I, I think this is the main question, and I was also thinking on this uh, uh, during the whole session, uh, what kind of answers we can give for ourselves and to each other and to our student teachers. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I have uh, uh, concrete answers, but uh, I think that uh, at least from our research, because that's still which I know uh, uh, the best, uh, we found some aspects uh, which remained uh, uh, intact uh, in the student teachers that they remained motivated they wanted to teach the students they wanted to to develop themselves and the students as well they tried to find out the ways how to how to how to develop uh, in this situation uh, how to communicate with the mentor teacher with the students in the school and so, and I think we can build uh, our conclusions on this. And also, what I mentioned to you that they didn't lose their devotion for the for the for the uh, for the uh, job and uh, neither to the to the profession. So they remained uh, motivated, and maybe we can build on this as well. What came into my mind quickly to leave space for the others, that 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 maybe uh, we have to prepare the student teachers in the futures to uh, future to situations like this. So what we do uh, in a totally unexpected situation, uh, I think this is what we learned that there can be. Uh, absolutely unexpected situations. Uh, fortunately, there are some research and some publications uh, on this issue as well. So how we can prepare uh, future teachers for unexpected uh, uh, complexity of the situations. And maybe we have to pay attention to the fact that uh, things are not going on the way we imagine and we want all the time, but and the, the last one, really, I finish uh, to give space to the others that uh, what is a bitter experience for us, at least in Hungary, that most of the most of the uh, segments of uh, uh, teacher education fell apart. So the student teachers remained, some of them, many of them uh, alone. Uh, the mentor teachers uh, uh, found themselves, uh, the teacher educators, you see, so everything fell apart. And we, in this very short and uh, very traumatic uh, some months, you, uh, we can't forget that we tried to survive as individuals as well. So not just as professionals, we couldn't put together into a coherent uh, system again. Uh, maybe we can develop uh, strategies that in the next unexpected situation, how we can keep together all these players, all the roles. Uh, so maybe these are the things which came into my mind uh, at first to your question. Um, Lucia, please. Yes, thank you. Um, well, just when when Eve and Marco were talking about his competencies and implications, it was very inspired words. And for me, uh, the first idea came to to the design of the teacher education program. I mean, um, I think we we should focus. At least I can talk because of um, specifically in our context that. Um, when we design the graduate profile of our degree, uh, well, in fact, we don't have any graduate official profile and we need to define it. And in this profile, how we should uh, prepare our student teachers or our future teachers, maybe we should focus on that cross curricular competencies. I mean, uh, at least in our context, some of these 
competencies re related to learning to be and learning to live together. I mean, uh, the inclusive perspective, the reflective practice, or even uh, inclusion or attention to diversity. Some of these competencies are not explicitly teach in our programs. It's like they are supposed to be teach, but they are not explicitly um, yes, teach by our university teachers. So maybe uh, this, um, including these cross-curricular competencies explicitly in our teacher programs should be one of the implication of this study. There were some things that we already know, but with these studies, maybe this type of competencies are even more um, important. And the second idea, it has to be also with the uh, teacher educator's role, because at least in our university with this practicum is quite um, weak. And I think it should be a stronger in terms of more support or visibility. Maybe with this uh, dual practicum that I already mentioned, the the teacher educators, I mean, the teachers at university, they, they interact a lot with our students. But in contrast with our prior uh, teacher education program, uh, some of our teacher educators, they didn't have any contact with our students. Only they check their report at the end of their practicum and say, okay, this is the final mark, an eight, a nine, and that's it. So um, I think the, the teacher educator role must to be stronger, in fact. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Lucia. And actually, this was also my uh, impression listening to those presentations. And actually, Marco already slightly raised this question that how much we are actually analyzing or, uh, or uh, understand how teacher educators are ready to, to support this kind of um, uh, practicum, you, uh, distance learning practicum, let's say. Yes, and uh, what are their competencies or readiness to, to adapt in this uh, situation and what kind of competencies are, are needed in, in, in future? Because I absolutely agree that actually this situation offered us a lot of opportunities to analyze how we can actually improve in uh, our student teachers practicum and what kind of uh, alternative ways and more flexible ways we actually can, in, can use also in sort of traditional situation or normal situation. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And... Um, Zrim, uh, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, thank you. I just like to add that uh, this was uh, the crisis situation, COVID-19 pandemic, especially the first wave. And um, these um, results shows um, both positive and negative response of students. And we as a teacher educator um, should think about uh, what topics are missing uh, in our programs uh, to be uh, better prepared uh, for future our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So what is missing in our programs, right? And uh, uh, Nita, please. Yes, uh, is everything okay? Because I don't, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we hear you, please. So uh, I'm Nita from Kosovo, from, from the Faculty of Education. I'm related to the student teaching practice since 2009 and work as a coordinator for this process, for this experience. So it was different this time, yes, because uh, students, uh, even if they uh, went to school to gain their practice and they're not uh, theoretical knowledge to combine with the practice, they found uh, very difficult to connect uh, and to, to share their experience with a teacher, educator, or a supervisor, professor, as we say in here. So uh, the, the 
uh, only contact with them was by online discussions and uh, online uh, 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 giving their, the, them their uh, duties to to do and to to work within the class. But mentor teachers, uh, from their perceptions, because I have my presentations uh, uh, later, uh, mentor teachers say that they. Um, found it difficult because of the uh, short term of uh, of uh, st uh, the staying of the student within the class uh, because uh, in this uh, pandemic period uh, the 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 lessons the schedule of the lesson was very short and they couldn't give uh, too much uh, advices, suggestions for the students, and couldn't complete what they have to 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 tell to the students for the uh, for the teaching profession. So it was uh, a little bit difficult this time. But uh, according to their perception, as mentor teachers, they say that they can uh, they they did all that they can do. So thank you very much, and. Uh, it's Unfortunately, we have to uh, finish our session, but the good news is that this is just the beginning. <laughs> this is first session and uh, we can uh, uh, discuss throughout uh, uh, this day and continue also tomorrow in uh, panel session and in wrap up session. So uh, let me uh, Thank you again, uh, all our presenters. And um, just a few words as a takeaways that uh, this uh, situation gave us a lot of opportunities to learn. And of course, uh, we have to consider very carefully what we can uh, uh, use as implications or uh, what, what are actually implications for uh, teacher education and what is actually missing in our teacher education programs and how well actually teacher educators are ready for uh, new, new changes or new, new perspectives. So thank you very much again participating in this session and please take care of your mental uh, or physical health and uh, take a break. Uh, stand up and walk around and uh, next session starts uh, already 10.45. Uh, See you soon. <laughs>